Members of the press, you want me to stand or to sit? Huh? Sitting is better. Uh, I'm not sure whether I'm addressing the press, but I think I want to address members of uh, the Central Committee. Allow me to address members of the Central Committee in the presence of the press. So whatever the press pick out, that is entirely up to them. Colleagues, members of the Central Committee, this meeting was scheduled for us to come and conclude the business of looking at our constitution, a process that we started a number of months ago. And you recall that in the last meeting, we went through a number of articles in the constitution, but we didn't conclude and we agreed that we meet today. Ever since that meeting, as you are well aware, a number of events have occurred affecting members of the party. As I speak with you today, a number of senior members of the party have fallen victim to harassment. You may recall that uh, on my birthday, I was picked up by the police. And a number of you came to give me solidarity and support. And I want to thank you most sincerely for that. Besides myself, there are a number of our leaders who have been running either to police stations or to courtrooms. Last week, Wednesday, I actually stated at court, at the subordinate court, that we should apply to the administration of the judiciary for them to give us space at the subordinate court in Lusaka for us to be holding our central committee meetings there. And that was not a joke. It was because on that particular day, there were four members of the central committee appearing before different courts for different matters. In one courtroom was Chishimba Kambuidi. In another was Nakachinda. In a third was Chandakabwe. In a fourth was Malanji. One day. And yet the previous day, I was also appearing in court. So I meant it when I said, it seems like the subordinate court has become an appropriate place for us to be convening our central committee meetings. Besides those cases, I'd like to inform you, my dear colleagues, members of the Central Committee, that as we speak today, some of our colleagues have had to travel out of town because of police call-outs and court processes. Honorable Freedom Sikazwe is to appear in court on Monday, so he's out in Kasama already. Honorable Ronald Chitotela is also appearing in court in Kawambwa and therefore couldn't be here. Honorable Robert Kalimi, as you are well aware, was also arrested and detained. And soon after that detention, he had to rush to his constituency just to go and give comfort to his constituents because they are wondering what he has done. Right. Only yesterday, provincial chairman for Lusaka and member of parliament for Mandevu had to spend the night in the cells. He also today has a duty, first of all, to his family, to go and assure his family that he's in good health, and then to also assure the people of Mandevu that he's out of incarceration. 
Last night, Honorable Chishimba Kambuidi called me and said, President, please excuse me if I come late because the first thing I'm doing tomorrow is to go to my lawyers. Honorable Richard Musukwa, within this period, raided twice. First, his house in Chilabombwe was raided, property seized. A few days later, his Lusaka house raided and property seized. Honorable Davis Chama had to travel all the way to Mongo. He traveled on Sunday for his case to be heard on Tuesday. As if that were not enough, our own Secretary General, Acting Secretary General, Deputy Secretary General, for the sake of those who are doubting appointments, Deputy Secretary General Nixon Chilangwa has been bench warranted. Meaning wherever he is found, he must be arrested. He must be arrested simply because he applied to the court, the subordinate court, that he was supposed to appear in the high court in Lusaka on the same day when his matter was being called in the subordinate court. For that reason, he has been bench warranted. Talking of which, I also have to remind you, colleagues, members of the Central Committee, that during this period, the matter of Mao Zisampa against the party, or against individuals in the party, was also called in the High Court. And only this week, on Wednesday or Thursday, the matter of Mao Sampa versus the Registrar of Societies, in which you, members of Central Committee, applied to be joined us, and in which members of Parliament of the party applied to be joined to the matter, also came up. Now, I hope you feel like I do, that under such strenuous circumstances, I found it too heavy to ask you to come and start pondering on such an important matter as the constitution of the party because I feel that all of you in here will be discussing court matters and police matters and not give due attention to matters of the constitution. This is the reason, colleagues, why after consulting colleagues, we came to the inescapable position that the mood in the party now is not good enough. Otherwise, we may do a bad job with the Constitution. I'd like to beseech you, colleagues, that you mark in your diaries for the 10th of June, 2023. I hope that by then, we may have recovered from this, or at least may have been more hardened. And I think that's even more appropriate. I pray to God that by the 10th, we shall be even more hardened Hardened because the trajectory that we're seeing is extremely dangerous. A few years ago, we had a by-election for council chairperson for Kafue. The chairman for Kafue, who happened to have been elected on the UPND ticket, was expelled by the UPND, was expelled by Haga Inde Hijidema himself. What for? Participating 
in the Keep Zambia Clean campaign that was launched by the then Republican president, Edgar Chagualungu. The man was expelled. The expulsion was even confirmed and a by-election was held. The same person who did not allow his councillors, who did not allow his members of parliament, who did not allow himself to recognize the authority of the then Republican President Edgar Chagualungu, today has turned tables. Today, he even has the audacity to admonish an elected mayor. A female mayor for that matter. Our MCC, Mpasa Mwaya, member of the Central Committee and mayor for Kitwe, is not here today. Why not? First, she was admonished in front of cameras by a provincial minister. Admonished, taunted, for what? The young lady even explained and said, please let me clarify the statement that you have seen on social media, on WhatsApp, was not referring to the person you think I was talking about. I was talking about somebody else. What followed? Youths went around and said, we will not allow you to participate in any program that Againde is involved in. And we thought that would die there. Weren't we shocked? to see that even the president himself took issue and uh, to comment in public. And colleagues, those who may not know, like how they may seem not to know, the president, when he cracks jokes, they must be Clear jokes. Otherwise, loose talk by the presidency could be taken as policy. Because presidents don't joke in public. And the threat that was issued by Mpasa Mwaya by the president is a threat to that poor woman. On your behalf, I've since written a letter, an open letter. I've written several letters to President Hagainde, and I respected him because I didn't make them open, because I thought he would respond. But the fact that he doesn't even acknowledge my letters, now I've decided to do an open letter. And in that open letter, all I'm doing is advising him that what is good for the goose must be good for the gander. It was this same Central Committee that guided me in October 2021 to state that the patriotic front in opposition is going to be different from the UPND in opposition. We indicated that we are going to respect and recognize President Hagainde as President of Zambia and that we will participate in all government programs I indicated that. What has been the outcome? Whenever we appear, we are cajoled. We are ridiculed. And now it has gone to the extent of even being threatened. The Patriotic Front reserves the right to learn from precedence. We can also learn from history. We reserve the right to emulate Hagainde Hijidema himself by not recognizing him because he did not recognize not Michael Sata, nor did he recognize Edgar Chagualungu. 
So my message to you colleagues in the Central Committee is that be on the lookout. Soon you yourselves will have to make decisions on these very important matters. I would not like to dismiss you without talking about one very important matter. Zambia as a country was founded on the bedrock of Christianity. David Livingston knelt in Chitambo and consecrated this country. When David Livingston said this was going to be a great country for Christ, he consecrated Zambia. When Frederick Titus Jacob Chiluba entered into a covenant with God to declare Zambia a Christian nation, it was not his doing. Had it been his own doing after his demise, this Christian nation business would have died with him. But it has outlived Dr. Livingston and has outlived Dr. Chiluba. Meaning this is God's own desire. When Michael Chirufia Sata said, I'm going to follow the Ten Commandments in governing Zambia, he was not speaking from without. He was also inspired. No wonder his successor also decided, I am going to declare the 18th day of October to be the day of national prayer and repentance and reconciliation. We have always been a God-fearing country. And those who consider praying useless, let them be. For us in the patriotic front, prayer in on whatever day is important. And if we as a country agreed that on the 18th day of October we are going to suspend all other business and dedicate that day to God, so shall it be. Those who don't want to pray for God, let them not confuse the masses. And not you, members of the Central Committee, and not members of the Patriotic Front. There is going to be a fundraising function, fundraising breakfast, for the National Day of Prayer. I beseech all of you, members of the Central Committee, to take part, not only in that fundraising, but also on the day itself, 18th October. All of us members of the Patriotic Front, let's start preparing ourselves now. Let's prepare our hearts to go and pray on the 18th day of October as a way of repenting to our God. How can a person who is ruling a country that even its constitution considers itself a Christian country say a useless day of prayer? As far as I'm concerned, that's abominable. No wonder now we are hearing replacement of church with the media present brothels. People advertising, come in such a place there is free women. In a Christian country? No. Homosexuals banning each people. On that score, colleagues, we stand in total solidarity, in total solidarity with members of the clergy. I have to state here, I have to state here that some of the members of the clergy were our very toxic critics. They criticized us left, right, and center. 
I remember the church to which I belong. Openly criticizing the PF government. We never stopped going to church. We still continue to go to church. We still continue to respect the clergy. We never called them names. Because we believe in the fact that for any country to be governed, it needs critical voices. And the voice of the church is one such important critical voice in the governance of a country. We have had threats issued against members of the clergy purely for expressing opinion. Going contrary to the self-praise we have been hearing that now there is freedom in Zambia. <laughs> Arresting a member of parliament on Africa Freedom Day in a country that's governed by a person who says he has introduced freedom for the first time is shocking. In of his children, small children. It is shocking. Colleagues, if you have heard anything from me, it is nothing. Members of the press, if you think you have heard anything, it is nothing. On behalf of the chairperson for information and his team, I would like to invite you to a press briefing on Monday. Come and listen to us speak on Monday. We shall address these and even more matters of governance. Monday, 10 hours at the PF Secretariat. <laughs> Members of the Central Committee, I would like you to be there with us so that you also can come and listen and some of you are also allowed to come and speak. I would like some of you to come and express yourselves because there are different dimensions of this matter. This is also to advise you colleagues, members of the Central Committee, again like I keep saying, if you have any difference of opinion, it is not for the public. Do it bilaterally. Don't allow the enemy to divide us. This is one united party. This is one solid party. And make no mistake, if there is anything that's making Haga in the Hijidema spend sleepless nights, it's just the mention of the name Patriotic Front. Let us continue to pray for those of our friends who have bereavements. And I'd like to bring to your attention a fact that is already known by most of you, that our provincial chairman, Foluapula, today, as we speak, is putting his dear mother to rest. There are others who have already been put to rest Western province has had more than a fair share of bereavements over the last few weeks. But also in southern province. And I also know that there is a bereavement in the northwestern province which was shared on the MCC blog. My dear colleagues, I'd like us to stop here and invite all of you who can manage to stay a little while, 10, 15 minutes, lunch is served. And please, those of you who would like to get the cards, just come and see Madam Mumbipiri. She will give you details of where the, bref the fundraising breakfast cards are being sold. And I'd like all of us to support the fundraising for the National Day of Prayer. Colleagues, I will not close because we didn't open any meeting. This was just for me to inform you with regret that we could not proceed with considering the Constitution. I wish you a lovely weekend. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.